Alrighty, everyone. Summer Game Fest 2023. DSP reacts, and this is my live react of it. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> I'll be doing a live react for the whole two-hour show. And after the fact, I'll also be doing a separate video that'll be a recap reactions where I kind of summarize everything that we see and I take notes on and all of that. So this is the live portion. A lot of you have been requesting this. I'm excited for it. Let's see what it is. A little weird that it's Summer Game Fest and it's not even the summertime here yet, but it is what it is. <laughs> it is, what it is. This is the same man who runs the Game Awards before the year's over, and therefore games that release in December don't get uh, considered for Game of the Year, but whatever. Here we go. Two hours. Two hours of fun. <clears throat> and lots of bubbles. I'm ready for bubbles. If I need to blow my own bubbles, because we get 100 likes on the stream, Please I will do it. Welcome to the stage, the creator of the Game Awards, I guess they're underwater. I didn't even realize that was the theme, is that they were underwater. That's exactly what it is. <clears throat> There he is. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Summer Game Fest. Woo! 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 We are in person, and today we've got a look at what's next in video games for you. We are live here in Los Angeles at YouTube Theater, and it feels so good to be in person with a live fan audience for the first time ever. Welcome, everybody. So it's a fan audience, because the last two Summer Game Fest were COVID shows. <laughs> when I started Summer Game Fest back in 2020 from a spare bedroom, I never imagined it would grow into this. Today, the video game industry has come together to show you what's next. This is a cross-industry showcase, meaning no matter where you play games, I hope you'll discover a new game to put on your wish list. I play games on my the Tesla dashboard. Video events has certainly changed over the past few years, but one thing hasn't. There are a lot of great games in development, and our singular goal louder. today is to there get you, you excited about the future. In just a few minutes, we'll see the first extended gameplay of Mortal Kombat 1. Extended gameplay. That's great. How it many delivers, sets? Don't worry. Alan Wake 2, the reveal of Fortnite's next season. No one cares about Fortnite. And yes, we do have a very special grand finale that you're not going to want to miss. That's all I'll say right now. What is it? But let's get right to the games and gameplay. How many microtransactions? The first reveal is something see you're not expecting, which makes it that much more exciting. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Prince of Persia? A side-scrolling Prince of Persia? So they, got, they, they stopped doing the remake, and now they're doing a new Prince of Persia? <laughs> Did they really stop doing the remake of that other game? To make a new one? The prince has been kidnapped and taken to a forbidden land. All hope rests with us, the immortals, to rescue him and save the Empire. We must save the Empire. But we weren't prepared for what was coming next. Oh, this, they're going to play shitty music that's going to get everyone fucking copy mashed and shit. Again, what a bunch of idiots. No, we don't want licensed music in Prince of Persia. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> How stupid. This looks kind of interesting, actually. I just the music is absolutely fucking terrible. But the actual gameplay looks neat. Like, look, there's combat, fun combat mechanics. And a, two, a 2D version, Prince of Persia. What I'm finding interesting is that they're returning this to 2D. Because Prince of Persia went 3D for a long time there, and then just died and never, we never saw it again, right? <clears throat> and now it's coming back. So there you go. Of course, that's awful music. Why the fuck does it have this music? It's actually driving me nuts. I don't want to hear this song on my fucking content and they shouldn't have shitty licensed music to push their game when the game should be with shining not the music so once again ubisoft completely out of touch with what gamers want getting shitty ass fucking licensed music nonsense but the game looks good i actually would play this game it looks pretty interesting i will fulfill my destiny a clone is to fight his evil clone so what's this called the lost crown January 18th. Ah, oh, looks good. That looked good. There's a little surprise. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown is coming in January. This is hilarious. What happened to the remake? Brand new action-adventure platformer in the iconic series with deep combat, some huge boss fights, and, of course, incredible platforming, puzzles, and animation 
bringing a modern take on the legendary franchise. You'll be able to see more at Ubisoft Forward streaming on Monday. I just, I just find it hilarious. All right, let's move along. That they went to back to the old formula. Iconic video game <clears throat> franchise that just celebrated 30 years. That's right. It's time for Mortal Kombat One. All right. Couldn't keep you waiting on this one. It has been four years since MK11, and ever since Ed Boon and the team at NetherRealm have been hard at work on the most ambitious MK yet that reboots the series into a new era timeline, and it's coming this September. Everyone has been asking, what does it look like? Who's on the roster? How do the new cameo fighters work? Well, now yeah, what the hell are cameo fighters? Combat. No spoilers, but this video is literally insane. Here is an extended first look at the story gameplay and yes of course the fatalities no you spoiled it we don't want the fatalities is this, is this a seriously is it what the hell i have had enough of you then go before i put you down <laughs> this is the story it's Kung Lao without his hat. Kung Lao doesn't have his hat? Seriously? He doesn't have his hat anymore. That's interesting. Air combo juggle there. That was kind of cool. Today, you have proven worthy of joining us. Yeah, so now Luke Kang is the god instead of Raiden, right? What do you want? Sento. It's my family blade. Sento's mine. Can she? And I won't give it up without a fight. Yep, it's Kenshi, but Kenshi's not blind. This is kind of cool to see the characters in different a different timeline where they're a little different from the previous iteration. Oh, look! So that's the cameo fighter. He comes in during a combo. That's what it looks like. He comes in during a combo. Johnny Cage, obviously. Okay, let's go back to one here. Who are you again? Lord Liu Kang, protector of Earthrealm. God of fire. Yeah, instead of God of lightning, he's the God of fire. There, there we go, yeah, yep. Yeah. Dude, it's freaking, it, it's it's like King of Fighters or like Marvel, uh, Marvel's Capcom, where they come in as an assist during a combo to extend a combo or to get you to fall for a mix-up and then you get juggled afterwards. So that's what the cameo fighters are. That's what I thought they were. But you're inexperienced. Whatever experience I lack, I make up for in heart. <clears throat> so Raiden is a monk now? He's human? But he has electric powers? That's weird. <clears throat> I guess Raiden is human. Yet he has all the same powers. There's Kano, classic Kano. <clears throat> Stages look pretty darn good, I would say. I'll be honest, the graphics look a little cartoony. <clears throat> If your disease becomes known, you will be banished. Melina? I only want what's best for you. Or do you secretly covet my throne? That's weird because Melina didn't have a disease. Melina was a, a, a clone of Katana, right? A failed clone that was like half of the Baraka race, but half human. And so that's why she had the, 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 the mutated face or whatever, but the body of a human woman. Combat looks great, I would say. The cameo fighters are kind of interesting because I think they're going to extend combos or they're going to create, uh, <clears throat> like, like setups where you, you fall for the, uh, they used to be called assists in other fighting games. Oh, look at that. That was cool. Well, I guess he does have his hat then. Rip your heart right out. It's the classic fatalities, basically. And then some new ones too. Yummy. He's already dead. You don't have to do the extra hit there, okay? It's ridiculous. Oh, how nice. It's Again, it's classic fatality. Pretty good, right guys? 
My only, my only criticism is it looks a little cartoony, right? The graphics. What we just saw, and to tell you more, I am so honored to welcome to Summer Game Fest one of our industry's greatest creators, a man who has been loyal to the same franchise and fan base for more than three decades. Please join me in welcoming to Summer Game Fest the creator of Mortal Kombat, Ed Boon. What's hilarious? He looks exactly the same as he did in the 90s. He seriously looks like, like he's the same dude. He hasn't even aged. Right, well, Ed, uh, first Look at of pictures all, of him from the 90s when the that game came incredible, out. Incredible uh, world premiere. We got to see all the game. That's immortal. I think he's an elder god, actually. Everyone just wants to know more about this because, first of all, this is in a it's it's MK1, <laughs> right? We went from 11 to one. So tell us about this. Is it a new timeline? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how many people have seen the the ending of Mortal Kombat 11. Liu Kang basically was kind of graduated into like you know a fire god, right? And he's he created a brand new universe and this universe this is why we're calling it Mortal Kombat 1 is because this is the beginning of a new timeline a number of these characters you've seen before but they're told in a completely different story and so Sub-Zero and Scorpion are brothers now and there's there's all these things that were rivalries before are now allies and so mixing the whole he's trying thing to make up, it like a touchy so feely world right that's the thing that's but watch he's going to become overbearing by the end they're all going to hate him everything we saw there was you know in game gameplay the cinematics look incredible uh, I know the team is working for four years on this but the thing we got to talk about are these cameos because we saw some pretty amazing stuff there now so tell us how does that work you obviously so we bit off of uh the marvel's capcom that you'll pick, basically and I oh i can say that a uh, kind of it's a unique new feature sort of a pair when yeah. you start the game yeah normally in, in a fighting game you'll you'll see a a roster basically you know where you select your character after you do that there's a second roster of characters which are a whole new uh completely different fighters that are the cameo fighters and these fighters actually they will join the fight, but they... A lot but of they, blank squares there. Yeah, so it's kind of like imagine yourself with Sub-Zero, but you have some of Jack's moves, and yeah. you can call him out. You can do it multiple times. Not like that Jack. Play, you know? <laughs> <So> <laughs> He's you got can, the, a cigar. He's like an 80s action hero. These two characters. All the characters <clears throat> can be combined with all the cameo fighters. And and it's all the original characters. It's all the MK1 version, kind of which is kind of interesting. Comes in, and they can actually customize it for what they like seeing, you know, the, the best team-ups. Well, so how does that work? So you're in gameplay, you have your main, you have your cameo. How do you, do you summon them? Is it time-based? Like, how often do they come in? It's, like, it's not a tag team thing, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you're you're basically summoning them. It's just one button push is basically summoning, but they have a variety. So you can go, you know, push that button with towards, and it'll do a, a different move. Push it with down, it'll do a different move. And so the combination... Oh, I see. So you can bring them in a combo. On exactly, okay. exactly. And and so, and you see, there's like a meter up on top, uh -huh. which is basically, that, that'll limited so you can't obviously yeah. fire them indefinitely but um you call you can call them pretty much whenever you want and they have you know like in the middle of a combo they'll have a lot of um you know basically right there. a whole arsenal of their moves so sony you saw come out there sometimes you'll see them appear twice in there there's reversals did you see that I, that looked like a reversal or combo breaker did you see that and he was comboing and then the cameo came out and interrupted the combo so there's actually combo breakers are going to be available as cameos as well as the main roster fighters you can play sub-zero with sub-zero right you can play you can same thing with scorpion but a, a lot of our our cameo fighters are kind of like nods back to our first uh -huh. game so you'll notice Sonya and Kano and Jax are in their kind of older costumes and so there's there's a lot of that novelty we have a lot of like really surprised ones. I think you you guys saw Goro yes Goro what's, what's in there, there. yeah yes, yeah exactly. so, so th there's a lot of like kind of really digging into the old Mortal Kombat games as far as getting you know um, we really love the novelty of it we really want the cameo what about uh, what's his name Neat the guy from the background the the old games. So maybe he's in there well, speaking of uh, not the old games, let's talk. You, you confirmed, I think, or it's at least known that Jean Claude Van Damme is actually going to be in this game as Johnny Cage, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one says Van Damme. That was yeah. people don't know. Say the Van Damme, not Van, Van Damme. Such an inspiration for Mortal Kombat. Who's this Van Damme? Yeah, it, part it, of it? it's a huge first uh, full circle moment. You know, the the first Mortal Kombat game we originally wanted to be Van Damme, the video game, and that and that never really worked out. So. I can't tell you how many times over the last 30 years we've tried to get him. Uh, you know, we were this close, yeah. like four or five times. And uh, so finally we got him, and he's doing the voices, too. Oh, so that's cool. John Claude, his voice doing Johnny Cage lines and stuff like that. We're really excited about it. 
Wow. Well, I know the team has been working so hard in Chicago to build this through COVID, and it's coming out in September, so we don't have to wait long, right? That's right. This, this has been a very difficult uh, secret to keep yeah. <laughs> over the last over the last four years, and so, uh, but we're we could not be more excited in terms of uh, getting players' hands on it. Um, it looks fun to me. It looks good to me. Showing a lot more content, a lot more characters, a <laughs> lot more cameo characters. You know, so there's a lot of reveals that are coming up. Amazing. Well, Ed, thank you so much for giving us the first look at MK1. As you said, this weekend people will be playing it, press and media, so we'll be seeing lots more coverage, lots more characters to reveal on the main roster and cameos. Uh, Ed Boone, thank you so much. First look at Mortal Kombat. Awesome. Look, it looks good to me. It does. It looks a little weird Amazing. with the graphics being a little so bit on the cartoonier side, but outside of that, it looks like Next a good up, idea. It's been a fun couple of weeks <clears throat> for action RPG fans with the release of Diablo 4, which is truly fantastic. Another big and anticipated ARPG is Path of Exile 2 from Grinding Gear Games, who have faithfully been updating sure. and patching the original PoE since its release in 2013. We haven't seen anything on the sequel in over two years, but that changes right now. Here is your first look at a raw gameplay capture from Path of Exile 2, a sequel that pushes the engine and gameplay to a new level. I believe what they were saying is that Path of Exile advanced ARPGs, action RPGs, to the point where that's why Diablo 4 actually has some of those things implemented in it that Diablo 3 didn't. But I never played the original, so I don't really know much about it. I mean, yeah, it looks exactly like Diablo. Look, it's it's Diablo. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's like the same exact thing. In fact, is this not my sorcerer build I'm using right now? Look, it's chain lightning, and it's ice around to freeze the enemies when they're getting close to you. This character is literally my build in Diablo 4 right now. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. Uh-huh. So if you like Diablo, you'll like Path of Exile. Right? More coming July 28th. Yeah. It's <laughs> amazing and there's yeah. more coming in July. Last week marked the release of Street Fighter 6, a game we featured last year at Summer Game Fest. Well, the team at Capcom has an important update to share with okay. you right now. Probably Rashid, the first DLC character. Or not, because that doesn't look like Rashid to me. <clears throat> Why is there a, a robot Ryu? <laughs> what the hell? A robot Ryu? I am the advanced artificial intelligence. Oh, what the hell? Welcome to what the hell is this? What the hell am I looking at? Oh, this is... Okay, it's a crossover with that dinosaur game that's coming out. Right? What the hell, Cyberguile? <laughs> Yo, what is this? Cyberguile? Yeah, it's an Exo Primal crossover. What the hell? That's pretty funny. Guessing Ryu from Street Fighter facing off against a dinosaur probably wasn't on your bingo card for today's show. That Street Fighter Cross Exo Primal collab will launch in the fall with the game coming out. Are there going to have crossovers game. between all their games now? But guess what, guys? That may actually not be the craziest collaboration on the show today. Check this out. There's nothing. He's so excited, this guy. Which, you know, you like that because it's genuine enthusiasm. He's not some asshole who's just doing this to get a paycheck. He could have done anything else, but he decided to be a video game guy and cover games, and it's, it's nice to see passion from someone. What the hell is Nick Cage doing in a game? Nick Cage Dead by Daylight! <laughs> That's right, Nicolas Cage is coming to Dead by Daylight in July. That's I mean, funny. I don't know how these things happen. What horror movie is he from? I figured the easiest way to find out is probably to go right to the source. This man's bold creative choices have earned him an Academy Award and a few memes on the internet across more than four decades of incredible films. Please join me in He's here. Summer Game Fest 
Nicholas Cage. <laughs> All right, that's cool. My God, he looks so different. Look what he did, he shaved and he dyed his hair. He looks young again. Nick, I gotta say welcome to the video game world. Oh, wow, yeah, thank you. I'm so happy to be invited to your very, very cool club, everybody. <laughs> Finally, I mean, I gotta say, this is such a, a crazy, unexpected collaboration. I gotta understand, how did this come about? I mean, some people be like, oh, maybe he'll show up in Fortnite. Maybe he'll be in a Hideo Kojima game. But Dead by Daylight, I mean, how does this happen? Well, it's, it's a museum of horror, right? Yes. And when I make movies, one of my favorite genres is horror. And in, this, and, and in that genre, there's a character, a murderous ghost named Sadako, who I think is amazing. And she made an appearance in this game, so that was good enough for me. Okay. That's what, yeah, oh, I mean, it's the, the ring You're playing ghost. one of the survivors in this game, and it's cool that, you know, it's, it really is this museum of horror. Michael Myers, you said all these different characters all coming together. Um, and you, do you, pl you play yourself, or who do you play? So I play this uh, heightened exaggerated version of a film actor named Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, uh, he's going to a location thinking he's making a movie and instead he wakes up in the fog. And in the fog he's surrounded by crows and serial killers and it's rather amusing. And there's something about it that I think as a survivor is like a bonding experience. It's a bit like hide and go seek. You have your three other teammates who are survivors with you, and you're, it's teamwork. You're working together to pull through, and I like yeah. that. And so that was a, a large reason for wanting to do it as well. <laughs> also, the large bags of bonding. money they sent to my house is the other yeah, reason that I'm in this. this. I know we heard your voice. <laughs> <in there laughs> Huge, heaping, duffel bags full of hundreds. I want you to know when you're playing the Nick Cage survivor, I even have when you're choosing your skins, I even say, always remember to dress to match your talent. <laughs> I want you to know that you're with me, that we're one, that we're fused. And so it was important to me that everything I do, everything I say, from the scream to the grunt, down to the most minimal, exasperated, expression of uh, a sigh whatever it is it's my voice so that we are fused all right <laughs> <laughs> what's cool is that he's totally into it, it. Uh, you I, can tell I mean, he's not just here to be so for fun. the paycheck this he's actually said, into this is such an awesome kind of you know collaboration with so many different characters for you i mean how did you find out about dead by daylight do you know much about the video game somebody world? very important in my family yeah. is a dead by daylight enthusiast okay. and and that really put the uh, hook in <laughs> pun intended uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, Dead by Daylight to me was an opportunity to branch out. To I've never been invited into this space before. Yeah. I'm always looking for new adventures. So this to me was like, wow, I can, ma I, make a, I can make a whole new audience, meet a whole new audience, and branch out and go on this Dead by Daylight adventure. I, I didn't say it took me nothing but a split second to say yes. Hmm. And speaking about split seconds, what, <clears throat> excuse me, what I noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, sinuses, uh, allergies. What I noticed was that every move you make when you're doing this, when you're in the gaming space, it's, it's timed down to the split second. It's, an, it's a very immersive experience when you're acting out in this space because every move, every grunt, every sigh you make has to be timed perfectly with the gamer's moves. Yep. So that was something that I learned from this, and I'm always looking to learn something. Well, we love having you in the video game world. We want to see Nick Cage in more games. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, I, I'm just thinking about him in other games. Like, he could be a lead Thank in a game. He could be, like, an Alan Wake game or something, right? That would be pretty cool to have Nick Cage as the main character of a game like that. That would be really neat. Nick Cage and Dead by Daylight. The chapter officially comes out on July 25th on PC and console. 25th. The PC players yeah. can try it earlier by downloading the player test build on July 5th. And here's an exclusive first look oh. at Nicolas Cage in Dead by Daylight. So he's just a survivor. They're not going to have like a killer specific for him. He's just a survivor, I see. <laughs> Damn right I made it. It's funny he didn't say a single word, did he? Till the end. Anything 
goes here at Summer Game Fest. All right, thank you very much, Nick. Now, lately we've been seeing an incredible number of video game adaptations, but back in 2019, The Witcher on Netflix, inspired by The Witcher book series, showed the potential of well-done adaptations, and later this month, Season 3, Volume 1 arrives, and now it's time for the world premiere of the trailer, introduced by Henry Cavill and the cast. Yeah, but isn't this his last season? Hello, Witcher fans. We are all gathered here today to share something with you. Be sure to tune into The Witcher Season 3, Volume 1 debut... De de <laughs> <laughs> volume 1 debuts on June 29th, only on Netflix. Get ready to watch the world premiere of our brand new trailer for Season 3 of The Witcher. Thanks for tuning in for the summer game. We're all very British here, incredibly British casting, yes. Yes. I've never seen this show at all. I've never seen a single second of it. This is the most I've ever seen of it right now. But it'll certainly help him keep I just find it funny that, that Cavill is pr promoting this when he outright said he quit the show because the show stopped following the lore of the books and he hated it after that. So he, this is his last season. <laughs> and now he's promoting it, even though he doesn't like it anymore. Oh my god, that looks bad. Did you see the fake? Oh my god, the blood looks so fake! <laughs> Yo, it's blatant CGI blood. It looks so terrible. Seriously? Everything that's happening. It's all connected. And she's at the center of it. Ugh. I mean, I've never seen the first two seasons. But this is not impressing me in any way. This looks pretty bad. <clears throat> this looks like a freaking CW show. Are you... Serious? I think it's gonna say next on Ar on Arrow. <laughs> Seriously. Uh. Look at this. What the fuck? Uh. Oh my god, the effects are bad. Has a way of repeating itself. <laughs> the dangers we've seen foretell an even more menacing future. Oh, I don't know about this, the man. First time, <clears throat> I understand real fear. When does the gang from Riverdale show up to save the day? The witches. Is that so? Oh god, the CGI looks bad. I'll never get over how cute they look for monsters. And they're like, no, please don't hurt me. And then wow. Fangs. Just like a boatload of fangs. All up in your business. Alright, I'm uh I'm gonna be honest with you guys after seeing that. I'm kinda glad I never watched the show. <laughs> I'm serious. That did not look good to me at all. That looked pretty bad. Anyway, back to games, thankfully. <clears throat> what is this? Oh, look. A skull. How inviting. It just it says, welcome. Welcome to our, our town. Join us. Oh, first person shooter, huh? The Witch Hunt. Hi! <laughs> Head pops right off. The Witch Hunt begins. Looks interesting. It's like Doom, but more gothic, right? It's not futuristic. Yeah. Uh, Witch Fire? That looks interesting. They said that was September. September 2023. I missed the exact date. I think it says September. That didn't look bad at all. Which fire? Oh, look. PSVR. Can we can, anyone got a P? Now's your chance. What the hell is this? 
the game no one will, will ever play because no one's fucking buying PSVR 2. It's too expensive. No one's getting that shit. Wow, look, it's the two people who have it. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> Everyone else is playing, like, you know, Diablo, Zelda, Street Fighter. These people are playing Crossfire Sierra Squad instead because they're the people who actually bought PSVR 2. <laughs> That's great. Even the name is bad. Crossfire Sierra Squad. What the fuck? Got enough words in there? <clears throat> what the hell is this? An ad for a Samsung TV? How nice. A, pa a paid product placement. <clears throat> the root will destroy everything. For all time. Well, it already destroyed the frame rate of your, your uh, promo here. It's pretty choppy. This is a third person action game. <clears throat> no turning back after this. You sure? That actually looks like the Hellgast. <clears throat> it, it looks interesting, but it's going to be one of those, probably a co op looter shooter game and already you can tell the graphics are choppy it's not optimized even for the demo they're showing here I have summer game fed it kind of reminds me of Gears of War but you know a little different obviously with the, the design there haven't been a game like that in a while so it could be alright if they optimize it and it runs well this could be alright which fire is September 20th Okay, September 20th. Thank you. Put that down here. Which fire didn't look bad? It looked interesting. Remnant 2, July 25th. I don't know. Like I said, when you're showing your game at Summer Game Fest and it looks choppy, that's probably a bad sign. Just saying. Including a first look at the game Thank you, Marlin, for Super Chat. Two. The world premiere of the new season of Fortnite, Call of Duty Season 4, and maybe a few more surprises for you. As we go through today's reveals, use the hashtag gaming on TikTok on TikTok to react to the news. And we want to welcome everyone co-streaming the show live on TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, and other platforms. For those of you on Twitch, we also have a special Warframe Twitch drop. No, no one cares. Steinax if you're on Warframe, if you're on Twitch, you're on the wrong fucking place. If you haven't noticed show. all the horrible things now, happening there, get off of Twitch right now. Stream anywhere else. Another legendary <clears throat> gaming hero <clears throat> set to return later this year in a brand What's up, Radical Jaws? Thanks for the membership. The ground up in a style that I think is going to get this fan base and longtime fans of video games very excited. Here's another Summer Game Fest global game announcement. New thrills with a classic feel. New thrills and a classic feel. Sonic. A new Sonic game. Cool. I'm down for a new Sonic. <clears throat> nice. Looks good to me. I'm down for this. It's been a while with the, since the 2D Sonic. You know, Sonic Mania was really, really good. And look at that, they redid modern graphics, but it's classic Sonic gameplay. Cool. Oh, other characters as well. Tails. Knuckles. Amy. That's cool. Looks good. Oh, I should use their hammer to break the wall. Oh, this looks great. Oh my god, look at that. That's cool. New transformation ability. Music's also good. This is exciting. I'm actually really excited for this. A new Sonic game. Classic style. Dun, 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 dun. Looks like Robotnik is back. Oh, excuse me. Eggman now. He's Eggman now, right? Sonic Superstars. Cool. Cool. Fall. All right, I'm down for that. I'm all over that one. 
new standard for 2D classic Sonic that's bound to appeal to new and legacy fans alike. This past April, Honkai Star Rail launched, and as you're about to see, the game is bringing an exciting new character to Space Fantasy RPG. Who cares? However, we don't just have a new peak for current players, but also for those awaiting the game's release on PlayStation. Take a look. Honkai Star Rail. The name that just rolls right off the tongue. Don't you get bored running across the map every day? Team Trailblaze, back from duty. Mission one accomplished. Where's our next stop? I can't wait. Oh my god. <sighs> Another busy day ahead of us. Man, the game that just looks so unique. I've never seen a game that kind of has this visual style before. I'm glad when they break the mold and they really go on, you know, directions we've never seen before. <laughs> I can't imagine what they were, what audience they were possibly going for with this game. Obviously, they were trying to tread new ground and, you know, just, you know, break new horizons. <laughs> oh, my God. Honkai. Star Rail. I'm only writing it down to clown on it later. Anyway. Honkai Star Rail. Never mind, I miscalculated. Can you let Never mind, I miscalculated. I thought someone would care about this game at Summer Game Fest, but <laughs> I was horribly wrong. <laughs> oh my god. PS5, quarter four, Honkai Star Rail. Yes, how exciting. All right, inspired by the story of Pinocchio, Lies of P is a Soulsborne-like game from the team at NeoWiz, which is coming to Game Pass, PlayStation, and PC this year. Well, if you're wondering exactly when, we have news to share with you on its release with this brand new trailer. Okay. It's a butterfly. How nice. This is uh, Lies of P, right? The Bloodborne-esque Pinocchio game. Ooh, French. Pinocchio is French, right? It's a French story. No wonder the original Pinocchio is so dark. There's horrible French people and their culture, everything about it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. It just turns turns the stomach. Everything about it. The baguettes, the cheese, the gooey cheese, the wine, the grapes. The language. Oh, it's awful. The game looks good. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. Don't be offended. If you're French, I'm sorry. I was joking. You could make fun of me now. <clears throat> oh, you can play the piano in the game. That's nice. I can't wait to do like a 14-hour piano solo. Look at this thing. You know, this music, the game feels like we're, we're welcoming. You know it's not, right? Is Pinocchio Italian? It's Italian, right? <laughs> I went on a big tangent about the French. It's totally Italian, isn't it? All those Italians are absolutely disgusting people. Listen, They're horrible, greasy, nice greasy, nasty right people. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm a quarter Italian, I know. They're horrible. Anyway, I'm joking once again. September 19th, okay. <clears throat> Awful people. Play the demo? There's a demo. That's right, a demo for Lies of P is now available across PlayStation, okay. Xbox, and PC. Check it out and prepare for the release on September 19th. Now it's time for the reveal of a visually stunning new game based on a classic manga with a story and world created by one of the most celebrated anime artists of all time. Mm -hmm. This is one of those games that I feel lucky we get to reveal for the first time here at Summer Games. Okay. Games. And I think you'll be pretty hyped once you see the gameplay all built in Unreal Engine 5. Here we go. Unreal Engine 5. Ooh. Ooh. All right, what is this? This is a, it's a manga artist, a renowned manga artist, eh? Man, I can't wait to play that French Pinocchio game, though. Let me tell you. That's what I'm looking forward to. You think they'll ever make one? 
Okay, what is this? <clears throat> well, we know who the artist is. It's Toriyama. Right? Akira Toriyama? What's the game, though? Mm-hmm. It's an original adventure. Yeah. Interesting. It's not Dragon Quest, right? It's not it's not anything that Toriyama, Toriyama did before. I don't know why we have licensed music. <laughs> Do we really have licensed music for a Toriyama game? We really did, huh? <clears throat> they had to pay money for a licensed song. No one knows. That's interesting. Sandland is the manga. I've never heard of it. Sandland. Huh. So, stay tuned. It doesn't say when. Just stay tuned. It could be interesting. I wonder what it is. Is it action RPG? It looks like it could be pretty good. I like Toriyama's art and, and his uh, designs. Sandland, get ready to become an unlikely hero in an adventure where you don't need to be human to save humanity. Uh, that's coming from Bandai Namco, and we're excited to see more of it soon. Independent games are such an important part of the industry. Indies! Very important to us at Summer Game Fest is supporting those creators as well. After the live sh show, stay tuned for Day of the Devs from I Am 8-Bit and Double Fine with some incredible indie game reveals. Now, one of the biggest independent Day publishers of the is Annapurna Interactive. And later this month, as part of Summer Game Fest, they'll be revealing a number of ambitious new projects. Let's see how many you can figure out in this little tease. Oh, really? Apparently, Sandland is all the way from back in 2000, so it is... Oh, Stray! Stray! <clears throat> now, what they're saying is there's going to be an indie showcase on June 29th, see? Well, it'll be a sequel to Stray. That'd be cool. One of our biggest announcements yet. Annapurna, which it would be, uh, yeah, cool. It's all Annapurna. I wonder what that was at the end. We'll find out later this month. All right, next, we're stepping into the world of Throne and Liberty, a free-to-play PC and console MMORPG from NCSoft and Amazon Throne Games. Throne and with Liberty. An always changing environment, massive scale, PvPVE, and the ability to transform into creatures to battle across land, sea, and air. Here's a look. Throne and Liberty. Throne and Liberty. It's an MMO, right? <clears throat> Our guiding star has shattered. Its shards scattered across the world. <laughs> In a totally original world you've never seen before. Gameplay mechanics you've never experienced. A CGI intro trailer that's not representative of any in-game footage. <laughs> I love it. Dramatic reaching towards an item you'll never obtain in game. Look, a giant deer that looks like the boss from Elden Ring. Ooh, orcs. Never seen those before. Oh, a glowing axe. Slow motion dramatic dive into the waters that you'll never do in the game. Why is it that for all these MMOs, they always make it look so epic, and then you play it? It's like, yeah, it's an MMO. I get it. I know what it is. Why'd you show a, tr like a, a fucking game preview that has nothing representative of what your game is? We know what an MMO is. And some people will play them because they're good. They have good social aspects to them. It has a good gameplay loop, a good currency system, you know, gr grindy gameplay, but it, it's rewarding. People will play them. But then they do these, these big epic in oh my god I've never seen a guy like this before except for every other one where you team up against them because they're giant little bosses or whatever like big deal <laughs> the 
Tech test. There you go. I'm signing up right now for the tech test. I don't know about you guys. That looks so unique. I also want to say hello to everybody watching on Steam right now. I'm sorry we don't have any free Steam decks for you right now. But on June 19th, Steam Next Fest does return, giving fans a chance to try out hundreds of new in-development games. One of them is the free-to-play medieval fantasy sword-fighting game Warhaven from Nexon, which lets you transform into supernatural immortals. Here's a new look. War Haven. Is it silent? Why is it so quiet? <laughs> this is a silent game. Oh, I see, because they didn't have room for the licensed music. We had to, you know, we had to be able to hear the licensed song, so everyone had to be very whisper quiet. Shh. <laughs> Quiet, I can't hear that. I can't hear her singing. You know, I will say this. This is representative of the game. Look at this. This is actually what I would want to see. I actually give these guys credit. This makes the game look pretty interesting. Because this is what the game will be. Right? They're actually showing you gameplay. That's, that's to be respected. Look at this. Here's a mage class, right? <laughs> the body chopped in half. That was kind of neat. Hey, look, there's like a knight class, right? Or maybe a tank class. This doesn't look bad, actually. I like the visual style. The gameplay looks interesting to me. I received my first tip of the day. Actually, I take that back. We got two tips. Because someone used the old tips link. But we're, we're using... We're going back to the original tips link now, guys. Okay? I got an $11.90 tip. Someone says, I've been watching you for 10 years on and off. I, I will help. One day I will help more than now, but I want to say thank you for your good memories that I had growing up and watching you. I always keep an eye out for all of your stuff, even through all the stuff that you go through. I hope that brighter days are ahead. Thank you. What a nice tip. What the hell am I looking at? What the shit? <clears throat> fart animals? Oh, party animals. Excuse me. I said fart animals. A cutesy game. Party animals. 9223. Or 92023. Party animals. That was such a quick promo. Pilgrims, summer is coming, and with it, a lot of cool stuff will make its way to dying light to stay human. Get ready for dying light. Dangerous nights and roaming There's more dying light Even content, seriously? Parkour, People still play the your game? In June. Then, right after that, we'll kick off an even season like you have never seen before. Trust me, for one of them, you will want to get your butt barbed wired. Very soon, you will get the deadliest summers to date. What the hell's going on? What's this now? Dude, this is like... Oh, shit, it just buffered. Oh, my God, what's going on with Summer Game Fest? You saw that, right? <laughs> what is this? Crash? Crash? What kind of game is this? Crash what? What is this? I don't know what this is. I'm confused. Crash Team Rumble? June 20th? It's confusing because it was given so... It was so fast and then it glitched. It like buffered. And you couldn't tell what was going on. So apparently there's a crash team-based game coming out or something <clears throat> on June 20th. <clears throat> I guess. Hotel dude, it took me two dollars. Said, you ever see? You what? What shows do I watch in my free time? We'll talk about that later. Thank you for the two-dollar tip. But by the way, that's the old link. Please use the current link now. Thank you, Hotel dude. Neo Cortex's right hand guy in season one. Now it's time to change the topic and descend into madness. Oh, good. That sounds Joining good. Joining me is a guy who was last on stage at the Game Awards 2021 to announce Alan Wake 2. Oh, good. Good, He's good, good. All the way from Finland. Please welcome from Remedy, Sam Lake. Alan Wake 2, baby. Here he is. Here he is. Good to see you. 
looking dapper. You know who that always. is? That's Thank Max you. Payne. Thank you. Well, we are so excited because when you announced uh, Alan Wake at the game, or Alan Wake 2 at the Game Awards, you said 2023. We are in 2023. It's coming this October, and we are so no, excited. No, I'm here to announce an extended it's delay a of four time years. Coming for fans and for you. 13 years since the first Alan Wake. So tell us a bit about what can we expect in the sequel. It's been quite a journey, yes. Yeah. Um, Alan Wake 2 is Remedy's first survival horror game. We have two playable characters. It's a 50-50 split between them. They are on their own separate terrifying journeys through two different worlds, and yet it's all connected. Mm. And the player gets to switch between them at given points in the, in the story as they choose. Yeah, we saw, obviously, uh, at the PlayStation event, you revealed uh, Saga, the, the second character. Uh, tell us a bit about her. She's in Bright Falls, and she's sort of living a, a narrative that Alan has written. Is that right? Well, uh, that's a good question to ask okay, going okay. into this. <laughs> so, yes, we, we have Alan Wake, our yeah. title character, of course, trying to escape from the nightmare dimension yes. of the dark. He's been stuck in the lake for 13 years. Saga, our new hero, FBI agent, uh, coming to the Pacific Northwest small town of Bright Falls together with her partner, yes. Alex Casey. Okay. So how, uh, and, and they're somehow linked. It's probably him. Point, right? <laughs> uh, they are coming to investigate yes. a series of ritualistic murders. Okay. And, and very quickly, the investigation turns into a nightmare when they discover pages of a horror story. Uh, maybe written by a certain <laughs> missing writer. By uh, initials AEW. And, and this horror story starts to come true okay. uh, around them. Interesting. So obviously, it's you know, Alan is still going to be playable in the game. You're going to experience his journey. But uh, Saga, this is sort of new character. And there is that sort of link. Tell us a bit about, you said, split 50-50. Do they have separate missions? Because I think you can, you can play them <coughs> in sort of different sequences or orders if you want, right? Yeah, we, we go into the experience playing as, as Saga. Okay. And, and it's a sequel, but it's also a standalone experience. We are not expecting everybody to do homework okay. if, if they have not played the original game. Yeah. Uh, this can be enjoyed hmm. uh, as is. Saga doesn't know anything about the lore, about the supernatural uh, in this world. She will be going in very quickly. She has to learn to survive. And with that, all the players uh, will be on, on that journey with, with her. Thank and, you guys for and, tips. I will shout uh, these out when I get a chance. Look for downtime in the show here. So <laughs> that you can hop to play Alan Wake in the dark place okay. uh, as he's trying to find his way out. And you can keep on playing as Saga in the Pacific Northwest as the investigation goes on. And you are free to switch between them. There are a lot of connection points yes. uh, in many surprising ways, but there is no right way to play through this. You can choose. You, you can go on as, as Alan all the way close to the end, or as Saga, or you can keep hopping between these two. Uh, sides of it. Well, you're always so good at kind of telling challenging, interesting narratives in unique ways. I mean, Remedy's always been known for that, and you especially, so we can't wait to see I almost feel like you should play, like, like a little bit with each character and alternate between. You don't want to do everyone's Today, though, story in one shot, right? We brought right? with you some, <clears throat> some gameplay of Saga's adventure. We're just going to see a, a raw segment of the game, right? Yeah, raw gameplay for the first time ever. This is early on from the experience. <laughs> good, let's do some gameplay. Yeah, cool. So tell us, what, what are we going to see? What, what uh, supernatural forces of darkness have uh, brought the murder victim, uh, in this case, back to life as a monster. And, and uh, Saga is outside Pride Falls at Cauldron Lake, trying to find him and stop him. Okay, with that, let's take a look at raw, unedited gameplay from Alan Wake 2. Yes. I'm excited for this now. Being that this is going to be true survival horror as opposed to the last game was more suspense. All right. So let's see here. Do shout outs while we watch this. <laughs> Beaver Bother is trying to get unbanned. You're not going to get unbanned by sending me a tip, I'm just saying. Um. You're not getting unbanned at all, actually. Uh, Hotel Dude, thank you for another $2 tip. Yes, I know. I changed my tips link back today. 
and things should stay as they used to be as normal. Sorry for that if you got Sounds confused. Like I appreciate home. the two dollar tip. Oops. So I wonder if the light mechanic will be the same as Alan Wake 1, where you have to weaken the enemies with your flashlight first before you can hurt them, right? Okay. Oh, someone named Shitlips tipped me three dollars thirty-three cents and said hello. Well, hello, Shitlips. How are you? Are you enjoying the show? Oh, a deer! <laughs> Oh, I pooped my pants. Oh! Well, that'll make you poop your pants. That's not a deer. That's an asshole. Here he comes. He's still- Yeah! It's this- Yep. It's the same mechanic. You gotta re remove their, uh, their defenses with your flashlight. Jesus. The little blood! Oh my god. It was gory. It's gory now. It didn't have blood like that in the first one. Like Nightingale. Hey, you didn't read him his rights. <laughs> Just executed him. You're gonna check the body? You just leave it? She left the body. living in here. Maybe he was just a crazy asshole. There was nothing supernatural about that. He was just nuts. Some crazy guy living in here. Look. The hell? Oh, nice. A human heart. The text on a tattooed head. heart? <laughs> what? What the hell? A tattooed heart. Like I saw it in a dream. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my heart removed, put a tattoo on it, slap it back in my chest. Sounds like a good idea. this case with me, Anderson. Killer left a message. That's him. So us. he's he's the uh, he's the we partner. Trapped in Sam Lake story. is the partner. So Max all Payne is in Alan Wake stayed. too. That's actually pretty cool. There's something I'm forgetting. Something important. And Alan Wake now looks like Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, it looks pretty good, man. I think the a plot's going to be great, because that was the best part of Alan Wake 1 was the plot. Thank you to Sam and Remedy for that first look at gameplay. Now let's get a first look at the co-op campaign of Warhammer Space Marine 2 from Saber and Focus. Ah. Ha <laughs> ha, one guy. Yeah! The its splinter fleet. They engaged us on two planets, Avarax and Kadaku. I'll be straight with you, Titus. I have my resolution. Yeah! 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 Shut up, man! <clears throat> One asshole won't shut up. Ed Boone goes out to the audience. He punches him right in the face. Shut the shut the fuck up. Oh man. I'm trying to remember what the last one played like. Didn't it? Wasn't it very similar to Gears of War? It was over a decade ago, but I remember it playing like Gears of War. So I wonder if that's what that's what this will be. Co-op campaigns. Just like Gears of War 3, right? <clears throat> it was just like Gears of War 3 had the co-op campaign. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Allergies. As uh, Nick Cage would say. This winter. Winter is coming. Pre order the collector's edition to get a bloody statue. Great. Alright, so by the way, guys, we're closing in on hour one is ending. This is a two hour presentation, so we're about halfway through the presentation right now. Just so everybody knows. This looks familiar. This art style. Is this a game already, but it's a sequel? This looks very familiar. I've never played it, though. This 
Zoop. Yo, Grace. My potatoes. <laughs> like I said, it looks very really familiar, but I don't think I've ever played a game like this before. <clears throat> Is this trailer number three now where there's fire arrows raining down from the sky in a dramatic way? Yes, your grace, Snowfall. Beautiful indie game. Yes, your grace, Snowfall. Now it is time for another global game announcement, and this one comes from the minds of Saber Interactive Focus Entertainment. And yes, horror master John Carpenter. Ooh. It's a brand new world, a brand new story, and looks like a heck of a lot of fun. Check this out. John Carpenter making a video game. Interesting. What will this be? Thank you, Eternal Napalm. You took care of that before I had to. I appreciate that. You gotta be ready. <laughs> Why are they talking so slow? On my mark. Oh my god. We every person has to be a completely different race. Five, four, you notice that? Three. Zombies. No, no not what the frick? That ain't no zombie. What the hell is that thing? Okay. Toxic commando? What? Well, it's definitely zombies. It's first person. So what is it? Is it like Left 4 Dead? Is it a campaign based? Like, you know. <clears throat> so we're about to find out. All these zombies give love a bad name, let me tell you. Yes, that is correct, Derek. It is the immortal Bon Jovi. Who's being used here for the, the soundtrack. 2024. It's hard to tell what that is. Is that a, a single-player campaign-based game? Is that an online co-op game like Left 4 Dead? I have no well, idea. Expected collaboration. <clears throat> John Carpenter and uh, Saber with Toxic Commando. That looks uh, tons of fun. You guys think any of those zombies made it? The Zambies. Well, this August brings the long-awaited full 1.0 release of Baldur's Gate 3. And today, a new member is joining the cast. We're about to see the reveal of Lord Ember Gortash, the commander of a mechanical army of Steel Watchers. He's a second antagonist and is voiced by a familiar name. By the way, the person who tipped 1190 just tipped another 1190 tip to the other, the other tips link. <laughs> well, thank you for the double tip. I got both. I appreciate that. This is the same message, too. Oh, man. We are using the original tips link, guys. The dark side field tips link, just so everybody knows. All right, anyway. A new age is upon us. Gods have mercy on those who would stand in our way. A mad dog understands the yank of the leash and the hand of its master, but it cannot be an equal. You can be my equal. There's an old wisdom, a brittle alliance. So this is Baldur's Gate 3. I've never seen Baldur's Gate break. before. I've never played it. I've heard a lot about it, though. Glory, not scorches earth. Friends, allies, what does it play like? We don't know because they're doing voice acting. They're not showing the game. <laughs> right? This city is mine. I'm not ready to call you enemy. What do you say? Shall we be allies? Shit lips to me another dollar twenty-five. Yeah, I knew Baldur's Gate 3 was coming out August 31st, but that didn't tell me anything about the game at all. In any in any way. Right? Like nothing. It isn't you I answer to. Gortash. 
Why do I get the feeling it's a game you have to play the others to understand? Because I don't know what the hell we were just looking at. Gate three is on track, Sven tells me, still for the end of August, and we can't wait to check that out. All right. This fall, Marvel Games and Insomniac are set to bring Spider-Man 2 All right. exclusively to PlayStation 5. Sounds like you guys are a little hyped. So to tell us more is Brian Intahar, game director at Insomniac. Brian, thanks for coming by. I know you guys. Spider-Man? Who's Spider-Man? Like Never heard of it. Some, uh, fancy art Why is it not called Spider-Man? Yeah, it's two Spider-Man. Yeah, you know, not one. Not uh, spider it, it, It's not it the Spider-Man 2. It's two Spider-Man. It should be called Spider-Man. Marvel's Spider-Man. So Why really couldn't they call it that? Absolutely. Uh, <clears> I'm calling it that. It's called Spider-Man. Excited about this. You know, experience that you guys are doing with these sort of two characters. Uh, we saw some great gameplay at the PlayStation Showcase, but I want to talk about the two villains, I think, in the game. That we're, there may be more. There are more. But there villains. Are more out there, I Dude, There's ones, villains but, in this uh, game? What a spoiler. Show of, uh, we obviously I thought he was just delivering pizzas the whole the, game. Uh, PlayStation yep. event. So tell us a bit about uh, him and how he So Craven's this. very different from any character we've done. Craven the Hunter. You know, he's not powered by magic or, you know, tech. He's just the best hunter in the world, and he's coming to New York for his greatest hunt. And what's better than all of the Marvel characters that live in New York City? So Peter, Miles, and others, he's on the hunt. And others. What about all the others? Yes. Uh, yes. But there's a lot of, Venom also, yeah, there's a lot of characters uh, in New York City in Marvel. Symbiote is a part of this whole story as we saw in the gameplay. Uh, oh, there you go. Good reaction Venom. to the art. Uh, I'm glad you're happy. I'm I don't know how much you're going to tell us about Venom. Is this, uh, it, can you tell, is this is it Osborne Venom? Can you tell, what's the origin of uh, Eddie Brock Venom? Or? It is not Eddie Brock. Okay. It is not, it is not Eddie Brock. Okay. Um, our goal was to tell an original story, something yes. you haven't seen in the comics or the movies yet. Obviously, wow. we love Venom for a reason. Yeah. All those things you love about the character are going to be there, but how the story plays out, who is Venom, you have to play the game to see how it Really? Yeah. What? Wow. Play the okay. game, but you know what? That's, Fuck that's you. Fuck you, buddy. I was watching the show. I wanted to know. Is a big part of the game. Made me fucking wait, you son of a we bitch. All struck with the footage that you showed at <clears> the PlayStation Showcase was, uh, you know, how that is going to really impact the gameplay when you're playing as, you know, Peter. So tell us a bit about that and how, you know, the gameplay is going to be. So tell us when the two Spider-Men are swinging yeah, through the city together. Do they ever get their webs crossed and tied into embarrassing knots and swinging into each other? It could be kind of a mess, don't you think? In that gameplay reveal, you know. He's, you know, we call him the acrobatic improviser, him and Miles, but you can tell there's a lot more strength, a lot more raw power. So there's aggression. the symbiote suit Spider-Man. So yeah. it's not just what happens in game. The Spider-Man. Interesting, so how it affects him as well. Yeah, I mean, you saw some of that, and yeah. there's much more of that journey when you play the game. And I know the the journey is also more expansive. You've got Queens, Brooklyn, so even more of sort of yeah. City I mean, the city right? has pretty much doubled in size. <clears throat> so it's man, it's Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, and then being able to use the web wings to traverse at yeah. speeds way faster than they were before um, is really awesome. Will the entire city be encased in wildfire game, smoke? You guys have been building to be realistic, that would be excellent. Years. We saw at the um, at the PlayStation a breathing events, hazard everywhere you go. Uh, said at the end, fall. <laughs> Spider Man have to wear masks, like have, filtration you know, systems. We're like getting close Perfect. to that. Are you guys feeling confident that you're gonna make it this fall? You know, Jeff, I know you like exclusives. Yes. <laughs> and I can promise you, we are very confident what we're gonna tell you right now. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look. So it's an exclusive. We're about to see something for the first time ever. Are you ready for this? Here we go. We're about to see something exclusive. <clears throat> October 20th. Nailing it. October 20th. Spider-Man 2. Exclusively for PlayStation 5. Got it. Awesome. Well, Brian, thanks so much. For Wait a minute. What day is Alan Wake 2? Wrapping up the game, and we'll check it out in October. Thanks, Brian. October 17th. October, uh, only three days, eight. huh? All right. <clears throat> now let's take a look at Power World, a multiplayer open world survival crafting game where you can befriend and collect mysterious creatures called POW, who can also fight. In other words, kind of like Pokemon with guns. And then What? Then we're going to look at The Land of the Morning Light, a new expansion to Black Desert Online, which recreates the mythical folktales from Korea's Joseon Dynasty and some huge bosses too. Wow. Pal World? So this is Pokemon with guns. Yeah, it's, you know what's hilarious? These are way better graphics than Pokemon. These are way, way better graphics than what we just, uh, 
This is way bo freaking better graphics than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Are you kidding me? This looks good. Pokemon with guns. Look at this. Dude, these are blatant ripoffs of Pokemon. Are you shitting me? You can tell that they're Pokemon. They just slightly tweak the visual. They all look exactly like Pokemon character designs. No effing way. Dude, that totally looks like a pure rip. They're gonna get sued. They're gonna get sued. That looks just like fucking Pokemon. <clears throat> That's a lawsuit in the making, for sure. This is the Black Desert expansion. Can Okay, can I be honest? I respect MMOs. I respect these PC games. But here's the deal. You don't need to advertise your expansion. For example, Black Desert has an established fan base. People play it. It has a good, a good gamer base. Anyone who plays Black Desert is going to buy this expansion. Seeing this, for example... At Summer Game Fest is not going to make me buy Black Desert. In fact, I'm never going to play. Like, if I'm already playing it, great. But I'm seeing something, I'm never going to. Oh, I want to go play it, uh, an MMO now because I saw an expansion announcement at Summer Game Fest. It's never going to happen. So literally, having this is a complete waste of their money. There's no reason to ever have like uh, expansions advertised ever. There, I'm not buying Black Desert and playing it because of that. Sorry. Our story. <laughs> I have no desire. What it's a waste of time. Of Hobbits. It is time we told it ourselves. Oh no, Lord of the Rings. With hammer and axe <clears throat> we mine and sculpt. And the makers of Gollum. Across Middle Earth, delving for riches. Here we go. Yet the greatest treasure remains out of our reach, Moria. The mines of Moria. If this is for the makers of Gollum, this is absolutely hilarious. Come, my fellow dwarves. Rally together. It's time we took back our home. Return to Moria. I wonder if that's the same people who made it, who made uh, Gollum. That'd be hilarious. <clears throat> These Samsung ads are very intrusive. No one's been going to buy a fucking Samsung TV because they saw it at Summer Game Fest. <laughs> at an exciting new mobile game from a legendary franchise. A mobile game? Now I'm very excited. Very, very excited, everyone. I got my juices flowing. A Final Fantasy VII mobile game. We still don't know Sephiroth. Do you know about dumb apples? A Final Fantasy VII mobile game exclusive. <clears throat> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> They're robbing them with microtransactions. And now they're coming to rob me. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell is this? Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Yeah, ever spending. Ever spending to play it. 
pre-registration for Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis has just started, and users will have the chance to participate in an upcoming closed beta test. Now, speaking of Final Fantasy... No, 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 no. Today, during Summer Game Fest, DoorDash has your back. Get a <laughs> free burrito. DoorDash you has your back. Using the code GameFest. <laughs> Plus, get the chance to win a Final Fantasy 16 prize pack. DoorDash, wow. stay in your game. Yep, we got you. All right. Now, here's a look at a game we debuted last year at TGA. Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden. The story of two ghost hunters in the haunted wilds of North America. He's like... If you're watching Summer Games Fest, we got DoorDash food coming to your house right now, and we didn't pay for it. So you better have your wallet out when the guy shows up. He's going to be pretty angry with you. <laughs> oh, God. Don't nod. Don't nod. The kings of making good narrative games and everything else they make is terrible. Right? Remember Vampire? Or Vampire? Yeah, the fuck I played? What is this? I want revenge on what killed me. I want to live. I want to live. She's a ghost. As the man says, we face a choice, simple and awful. Spare or sacrifice? Death to the dead. Do we kill? To be together again. Do we part forever? Wow. Come out, if you are, come on, show yourself. Red. Every bloody time. Ooh. This is called Banishers Ghosts of New Eden. Oh, this is the spin-off game, isn't it? There's a new Yakuza spin-off game. It's going to be called Like a Dragon, right? Codename Joryu. like they, they changed the combat system a bit, right? What the hell is this? What the heck? Oh, what is that? A theme park? The man with no name. The man who erased his name. November 9th. What do you guys think? Should I get it? It's another spin-off. It's completely different from the one we played earlier this year that's about samurai time, that's for sure. By the way, thank you Radical Jaws for the super chat. He says Final Fantasy VII Sephiroth takes a poop mobile exclusive. And Yasa Voltic also... Oh, wait a minute. This is the asshole, right? Yeah. This is the uh, troll. Just get rid of this asshole. There we go. Green across the Okay. We're good. You get Radical Jaws on the leaderboard here. Definitely a leak here, Tim. For a super chat, thank you. What is this? An underwater exploration game? Uh, how long has it been now? Three years. It's cold in here. Two months and 17 days. Underwater exploration game? What sort of operation are they running down here? They shouldn't be here. Someone there? This doesn't make sense. Is someone there? Someone else down here. No, 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 no. Dad, are you there? 
Under the Waves, August 29th. Hmm. It's a beautiful new game, Under the Waves, and today, incidentally, is World Ocean Day. Fun fact. All right, next, wow. Call of Duty. Well, there's a new Call of Duty coming this week on Warzone Mobile. Today, we're going to give you the first ever look at Season 4 of Modern Warfare 2 Warzone next week. Here's your first look at Bondal, a new war zone location with points of interest, including medieval castle. By the way, they, they actually just did some some uh, an analyzing. Yeah, Currently, Check Call of Duty out. Modern Warfare 2 has the least amount of players as any modern Call of Duty of like the last many years. Like no one really is keeping playing it. It's just the core audience now. It really fell off, which is kind of interesting because a lot of people said it was good. I think Modern Warfare 2 was a pretty good game. I just kind of got bored of it. You know, stopped playing it. I didn't care about Warzone and everything. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people have, uh, have stopped playing it. They're gonna get tired of this shit. And by the way, there was not supposed to be a Call of Duty game this year, and now there is. They're complete lies. <laughs> but I will tell you this. I always buy expansions for games when they have licensed music in the trailers for them. It sells it for me. Like, right now, if this had, like, some, some even flow, or maybe some plush, or, uh, you know... Maybe if they hired Collective Soul to sing a song or two, maybe then I would buy the expansion for Call of Duty because that's the kind of music that I used to be into. That's, you know, it's totally a good use of licensed music and money. Totally the marketing makes sense. These idiots who run these fucking events. Oh, yeah, we got to get that licensed song. That'll get them to buy it. Play for free June 14th. Who cares? Who freaking cares? Obviously no one because that's why they have record Season low players. next week. Today is a big day for video games, but also... Oh, there he is. I was like, where is he? He's on the right-hand side. ...iconic German automaker <laughs> turned 75 years old today. Wow. To celebrate their contributions in the automotive and gaming space, and we've all raced a 911 in some point at a game, Xbox has teamed up have I? for a limited edition run of 75 consoles inspired by six famous Porsche race cars. And I'm thrilled to debut the first design here today inspired by the Porsche 963 that's racing this weekend at the 100th running of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Let's take a look. There. So they're giving out some exclusive consoles. What does this have to do with Summer Game Fest, though? Right? Like, are they advertising something? Those are some crazy-looking old race cars, huh? When they used to look like that. Yeah, exactly. Joe Mance, it's time for filler. Yeah, it's time for our filler segment. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And here it is, the Porsche Xbox Series X. These custom consoles are not for sale, but you can enter for a chance to win one right now at PorscheXboxSweepstakes.com. Make sure to stay tuned for the Porsche and Xbox social channels for additional opportunities to get your hands on these special consoles. All right, next, yeah. Phoenix Labs are building the next great entry into the cozy farm sim genre. We all like a cozy game inspired by classics like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. Previously announced for Nintendo Switch, there's now some exciting news for PC players too. Wow. Let's take a look at Fate Farm. Fae Farm, how exciting. Life in Azoria has been treating me well. Days pass so quickly. Before I know it, they turn into seasons. It's been a breath of fresh air. Wow. I think we found a way to get cozy and settle in. <laughs> But Fae there's Farm. something more I've been itching to explore. They have fairy wings? What the heck? Realms so is that supposed to be Fairy to Farm? Is that what it stands for? Fairy as Farm? As we're prepared, we can face anything. There's some enemies. You actually fight enemies, it looks like. So, what do you say? Even the friggin' spirit there's dragon is cartoony. So much yet to discover. Are you ready? Fae Farm, September 8th. We promise variety. There it is. Fae Farm and Mortal Kombat in the same show. Only. When's the collab? 
They come out as cameo fighters. Ben Brode, chief development officer and flannel enthusiast at Second Dinner, the developers behind the popular collectible card game Marvel Snap. What's up, Ben? I have never played yeah, Marvel you guys Snap. Have been on fire. Don't know Last about time it. I saw you was at the Game Awards when you won uh, Best Mobile Game. Uh, seems like you've been very busy. We're excited about the Spider Verse content you've been doing. Lots going on over there, right? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been exciting. We've been doing a bunch of new features, some of the wildest cards we've ever made, uh, and uh, <clears throat> some new okay. game modes. Yeah. Why are you new so game? excited? Is that, is that a segue, Ben? Certainly. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to announce Marvel Snap's biggest update ever. Uh, we have a new game mode coming next week. It's conquest mode. It's a great way. Way too to excited. Super competitive experience uh, and some exciting new rewards. But you don't have to wait till next week. If you haven't tried Marvel Snap, go download it right now on your mobile device or early access on Steam. All right, Ben. I, I love the enthusiasm, Ben. Spend money. <laughs> That's what I got. That's you. <laughs> now spend that Made money. for YouTube. All right. Well, we heard you brought uh, something fun uh, with you for us to watch, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, listen. I am incredible at card games, so I often win. Uh, but some people, and maybe you've had the experience, Jeff, uh, some people lose. Yeah. Okay. Fair. And I like to think it's because they suck. No <laughs> but awesome. sometimes, yes. sometimes it's because they might just be a little bit unlucky. Cue the tape. <laughs> oh, snap. Okay, I don't have an ideal hand of cards here, but that's fine. I'll see what I draw in future turns. Anyway, this is a YouTuber, isn't location. it? Location. Lamutus one. Each player destroys their deck. Okay, I guess I will work with what I have. I'll play Medusa on location number Medusa? two. Medusa. Plus two power. Let's see the next location. Clover Dangerfield has a 25% chance of destroying your cow. Okay, well, I mean, 25% isn't that bad. And it's gone. Okay, well, I have some powerful cards in my hand, so I can just wait. Let's see the next location. The Big Barn. Players cannot play four, five, or six cost cows. You gotta be kidding me. Also, if you don't play a card this turn, you have zero friends. <laughs> That's a YouTuber, right? I'm pretty sure I've seen his videos before. I think so. Still to come, we're going to look at Immortals of Avium from EA Originals and Ascendant. Okay. And the world premiere first look at Chapter 4, Season 3 of Fortnite Wilds. Now, if you're looking for the smartest way to level up your gaming this summer, compare top credit cards side by side with Nerd Wallet and start maximizing your cash back rewards on everything from Wi Fi to headsets. Now, here's a look at King Arthur Legends Rise, a new cross platform. UE5 game for mobile and PC, a Fantasy Squad RPG adventure that is available King to Arthur? register today. Yeah, guys, I'm just going to remind people in the chat, sadly, you got you can't be making fun of other chatters. Whether you like them or not, it's against the rules. You think it's funny, it's not. And you're, people are getting timed out now for doing it, and that's appropriate. So you got to chill with that shit, all right? We're all trying to have a good time here today, and it's not cool that you're trying to gang up on someone and be a jerk. So just stop it right now. Okay. Sorry I had to do that and act like a, a dad on my stream. I know it's kind of stupid when I'm trying to do a react, but whatever. Ugh. <clears throat> Fight with honor. That was a big match. Vanquish the wicked. And you may prove worthy of your legacy. Actual gameplay footage. King Arthur Legends Rise. Okay. Wayfinders. Do you remember the fall? The gloom descended on Skylight. You rallied to protect. What is with a lot of games looking so cartoony these days, right? Like they do it on purpose. They all turn out. I think the, 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 the trend started honestly with World of Warcraft. And there's been so many fantasy games that have this look now to it, right? This more cartoony look, colorful cartoony. And return to us. This world needs champions. Spawn Killer, thank you for the membership re uh, re upping. He says, Hope they show a new fable today. Maybe. So far, no signs of fable. 
Uh, to this anonymous tipper, I read out both of your tips. Because I told you that it came, you, you sent it to each one. And I read out both tips and added both of them to the leaderboard. So I don't know what you're talking about. I blatantly read this twice now. I told you that I got the tip twice, so thank you. Uh, I appreciate the contribution. And I got this tip as well. And they're all coming through. <clears throat> maybe you're just not, maybe you're desynced with the stream. Perhaps. Maybe you're like behind. Did you try refreshing your stream? Little kids did a super chase. cartoony graphics age better than realistic ones? I mean, I guess you've got a point. But at the same time, are those games really that memorable? Like, I, when I see a game like that, I just think World of Warcraft. I really do. You know? Unreal editor for Fortnite. <laughs> Steve, seriously, you don't stand a chance. <laughs> Under construction. Is it conquer a galaxy in about an hour? Is that what it said? Ne Stellaris Nexus. What did you say, guys? One more game? Good morning, scavenger. scavenger. This is just like turbo scavenger. mode game presentation now. I don't know what to make any of these games because they're just popping out so fast here. Right? This guy looks like a freaking ladybug with that jack jetpack. What is this? Space Trash Scavenger. Oh my god. Captain's log. Stardate 43152.4. Our fleet is cautiously entering hostile. This is Star territory. Trek. Something Star Trek. And the crew is standing by. We are the Borg. The Borg are back. How exciting. Or planning. Star Trek Infinite full reveal on Picard Day. I wonder what that Happy is. Summer Game Fest 2023. It's Will Arnett here. Yeah. Right? Um, my buddy Anthony Mackie and I have been uh, working on this for some time. We just woke up. Look at this guy. Will you. Arnett. Twisted Metal, which is streaming only on Peacock starting July Oh, Twisted Metal show. And I'm very excited to share a sneak peek of the character of Sweet Tooth, who I had the pleasure of voicing. Hope you enjoy it. Check it out. The fuck? Uh, that was supposed to be something to make me watch the show, huh? Wow. Really bad writing and bad. Wow. dreamt of duplicating wow. in order to multitask. <laughs> this is a hack and slash game with a Wow, that looks awful. That. Exactly, super France. corny is exactly how I would describe it. Of Lisfunga, the time shift warrior coming later this year. Wow. That was so cringe. Yikes. Yes, I know Samoa Joe plays Sweet Tooth's Receive body, and then Will Arnett is his voice. Let this power I know that. That looked so bad. Fight again, alongside your past selves. I'm here again. That's another me. I look good. Another me. Rewind time. Again, but with another me to fight with. Another me, and another me. You're coming with me. By the way, I'm not even kidding you. Guess what? That thong song got, got detected on YouTube. And if they kept playing it, it would have shut my stream down. It says, heads up, we detected copyright in audio and video on your stream. If the stream shuts down, guys, it'll come back in about two minutes, just so you know. I'm going to keep recording for, for DSP Reacts, for those watching on demand. But the stream might get shut down for licensed music. It detected thong song. It actually did. If you can believe it. Lis Fonga, Time Shift Warrior. Very cool independent game. All right, next up is a brand new IP from Ascendant Studios, a single player, first person magic shooter called Immortals of Avium. It's fast and fluid. It's an FPS in a fantasy setting, kind of like Doom with magic. It Immortals also has a of great Avium. Ca cast 
led by Darren Barnett as the main character, Jack, and he joins us now. Hey, Darren. Hey, guys. Great to have you with How us. You Thank you. This hey. is such a, a cool game, super high production value, spectacular gameplay. Uh, tell us about the guy you play. You're the main character, Jack, right? Yes, I am playing the main character, Jack. As I'm in Mon, this? What? He's a battle mage. Where am I? He controls all three forms of magic, triple threat. Uh, he's brash, he's funny, but he gets the job done. Well, uh, it's the, the gameplay, as we've seen, is just so fast-paced. There's so much action in it, uh, you know, with all the spells, the spell casting, and the magic. Um, what can you tell us about the story and sort of how this battle mage, Jack, uh, comes in? He sort of becomes a battle mage, right? Yeah, he kind of comes from nothing. He's, uh, I guess they call him a street rat. Is Thank what you, Jacko Verde, um, for a $4.20 yeah, yeah, tip. The, I think uh, he's asked if I got it. I, it just came through. So thank you, Jacko. Power to control magic. Uh, becomes part of the Immortals, which is like the elite Navy SEAL squad of this world called Avium, and they are in the middle of an ever war, fighting for the control of magic. Okay. Uh, I, you have a great cast, you, Gina Torres in it, lots of amazing actors in this incredible, really high production value game uh, that's coming out this summer. We don't have to wait long for it. Um, and I know you brought something with you to share today, which is a gameplay sequence, which is one of the, the most epic sort of parts of the game, right? Yeah, um, so this is a wild part of the game. This trailer is going to be showing you um, the Immortals and myself confronting Sandrak directly, who is the top villain of this game, um, and trying to end the Everwar. And it's uh, taking place in like one of the most badass levels of a video game I've seen. We're battling on top of a 400-foot mech in the middle of the ocean as it moves around. Um, it's wild, so let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at yeah. some brand new gameplay from Immortals of Avium, which comes out this summer for PC, PS5, and Xbox. What about uh, the production values? Are they high, Jeff? Sandrax literally pushed us to... Well, that's the finish. actress I've seen in sci-fi stuff before. Everyone that can I've seen her like a bunch of stuff. Immediately recognized her face. And we're still losing. From EA Originals, because the game looks totally original. Sure. Welcome aboard, immortal. What's our bearing, sir? North by northeast. Five knots. We'll catch him, sir. Immortals of Avia. Oh no, someone said is this forespoken? Don't say that. <clears throat> Don't give this game the kiss of death before we've even seen the trailer. It's first person. Colossal, reach the control room. Get to the control room and protect Selko. Zendara and I will hold off the Roshanians down here. Got it. Gotta get to the control room. Is he flying? What's going on? I don't know what's happening. He's doing a Hadouken. <laughs> a big magical Hadouken. I can't, is it, is it like an RPG? Cause the enemies have health bars, you see that? But, it's first person? Is it a first person RPG? Right? Thank you, Judas, for a super chat. I appreciate that. I'm so confused as to what the game is. Right? The enemies have health bars like it's an RPG or almost like Borderlands. But you're using magic coming out of your hand. I guess it's kind of like a gun, no? It's like, it's a it's gunplay, but it's without guns. It's gunplay with your hands, like magic. Yeah. This is really weird. Fight this war as one of you. You're what's called a triarch. The Pentasod has gifted you with the ability. Magical Borderlands. You think that's what it is? Magical Borderlands. Of kind of. That's what I think. It doesn't look bad. I wonder if it would stand out enough to be interesting, right? A Only thrilling adventure. Together. Sigil up. 
July 20th. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Magic Doom. Love that we get to show you guys so much amazing raw gameplay today, and that game looks incredible. Coming out this hmm. summer from Ascendant and EA. Now, one game that constantly reinvents itself is Fortnite. And tomorrow, oh. Shadow Season 3 Wilds launches. And today, oh. Summer Game Fest is debuting the cinematic trailer to preview the season. Oh. The center of the island has collapsed, revealing a vast, hidden jungle with ancient secrets to discover. And, of course, there's a whole new Battle Pass lineup where you can unleash the power. Yes. Even the content creators who are primarily we making content in Fortnite have dropped the game and moved on. But people still persist in playing and spending money on it. Like, the fad is long dead. But this game still persists because people won't stop spending money. But again, I will reiterate, there's nothing wrong with the game, but it's mostly kids still playing it. I know this for a fact. The people who I talk to, outside of the circle of gaming that we have here online, talk to anyone in real life, everyone says it's a kid's game. Yeah, my kids play. It's all my kids. I buy them gift cards because they want the skins. Like, it's literally a children's game. No one else is playing this. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't have an active community outside of kids. It's pretty much 80% 80, 80 kids. But they still play it. It's like a crazy, endless game. Can you, can you imagine... Like, growing up as a kid, and you kept playing the exact same game for, like, six, seven years of your childhood. For me, like, every year there was a hot new game, and I jumped from game to game. Kids are still playing Fortnite and dropping all their time and money into it. It's, like, it's insane. Transformers. A Transformers crossover. Oh, my God. What's hilarious about this is they found out they found Optimus Prime in the jungle. That's definitely where you would expect to find the Transformers in a jungle temple, right? Of course. We all know that's where they, their origins lie. Oh my God. Ugh. Fortnite Wilds launches tomorrow. Well, finally, guys. It's time to get to our grand finale. Good. And it is a deep honor for me Good. to present this game. What you're about to see is a world premiere trailer that gives us a new look at an expansive world we can't wait to explore again. Okay. This game comes from a studio that surprised the world and redefined the RPG genre with its iconic characters and rich storytelling. And I want to thank them for this trailer for one of gaming's most anticipated upcoming releases. Okay. The rumors were true. The rumors are true. We're still here at the scene of this Midgar. Midgar. Through sector 0, 1, and 2. Amidst the wreckage of the expressway, search and rescue operations are already in progress. So now at least we know this is not Final Fantasy VII Remake anymore. It's a whole new plot line. Just look that kind of makes it more interesting. It's so green. Even after everything Aerith's still alive. It, it's still going strong. It may look that She probably won't die at all. But in reality, it's barely hanging on. The open world! What's Cloud been doing these past five years? Where's he been? And you're asking me this? This is gonna sound crazy, but as far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. Because he wasn't. That's the right. life stream. It is the very essence of our. Oh, star. what's his name? Showing them the uh, the star map. Oh yeah, this is cool. Look how cool he looks. Uh, that's uh, at Cosmo Canyon. That scene. To Hojo, they're connected to Sephiroth. Shadows of the Man, I believe he called them. Sephiroth was in Midgard. We fought him. Whatever happened, he's alive. But why come back now? After five years, doing who knows what. Changing the timeline. 
Yeah, who were these robed people? We don't know, right? They were in the first one, and they were a change to the plot, the robed people. It wasn't really explained. Feast your eyes on the Turk's latest and greatest, Oh no. She may be new, but she's still a Turk. <laughs> the Turks. Combat in the open world looks interesting. I like that. It kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy 13 a bit. The graphical presentation and everything. Oh, there's uh, Yuffie. I didn't play the DLC, so we never saw her. Get away from me! They say she's a monster. That she can peer inside you. Whoa. Into the very depths Genova? of your soul. A Genova variant? That she can become those you hate. Those you fear. Those you love. Three. You murdered my dad! You burned my village! Do you know that I killed her? So, who is she? So what he's saying is he killed Tifa, so how is Tifa alive still? Early 2024. There you have it. That was Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming early 2024 to PlayStation 5. Nomura san, thank you so much. All right. That's going to do it for Summer Game Fest. Oh, that's Fest, it. They ended showcase. early. But that is not the end of Summer Game Fest. Stay tuned this weekend for updates on many more games during SGF Play Days, a hands on event for media here in Los Angeles, including Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty, as well as the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase on Sunday. Right now, though, stay tuned for Day of the Devs from I Am 8-Bit and Double Fine, which celebrates the independent game culture with a number of new game reveals over the next hour. We'll see you this summer, later this summer, on August 22nd for Gamescom opening night live in Germany, and again in December when we come together here in Los Angeles to celebrate 10 years of the Game Awards. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you That's soon. It. All right. Well... I'm curious what everyone thought. Started 21 minutes ago, huh? A little outdated there. Curious what everyone thought. Overall, there was some good stuff. But I don't think there was a single blockbuster announcement, no. Like, literally, nothing crazy. Nothing shocking. Nothing that even maybe we haven't really seen. Uh, except for, you know, maybe Mortal Kombat 1. <clears throat> and, you know... Yeah, I mean, it was it was an okay show. Like, it wasn't bad. I wasn't bored. It was a little interesting. It certainly wasn't as bad as E3. E3 typically is really bad, and I'm glad there is no E3 anymore. But at the same time, there wasn't anything there that, like, oh my god, it blew me away and made me feel like, wow, amazing. You know what I mean? Like, I do kind of feel a little underwhelmed at what was presented there. So, I mean, that's not his fault, Jeff. It's, you know, he can only present what these game companies have to offer. You know what I mean? But at the same time, there was literally... I don't think there was anything that, like, blew me away or I was like, oh, my God, I'm so happy that this game now has a release date or whatever. There was, like, nothing like that. All right? So, anyway, first of all, thank you for a lot. Everyone who watched live, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Anyone who watched this on demand on DSP Reacts, thank you for that. I'm going to do an in-depth recap reactions video separate from this one where I will analyze each announcement and tell you what I think of each game now that it's kind of sinking in here. And so that'll be a separate video, probably much shorter than this one. This one was almost two hours long. That one will probably be an hour or less. Um, but for th thanks for watching. And please, here's what I'd really like to know. What do you think about me live reacting? Is this something that you'd like to see me do and you'd like to see more of it or not? Only reason I ask is because right now we're in the midst of a lot of new game releases. And for me to take the time away from a stream to do this is, is kind of uh, a big thing. So I'm curious if people liked it or not, and if they would consider, would you like to see more of this because there's more events coming up in the next couple of weeks, or was this a one-and-done deal? Let me know, all right? Leave some comments on the video. Let me know on my streams. I'm very curious to hear your feedback on that. But thank you for everyone who was here live. I really appreciate that. Anyone who watched this on demand, anyone who contributed to support, because as you know, this is just a normal stream for me. So thank you so much, and be sure to check out Recap Reactions if you're interested. Until next time, peace out.